We left Gauteng on Christmas Day in order to spend the remaining festive period with my family in Guiani. We then spent New Year's Eve with my cousins in Musina, which meant that we would be using Pafuri Gate to enter the park. Every trip is different, from spotting new species, especially birds, to driving on roads we've never driven before. But some things remain the same, and that's the tranquility of our drives, the golden hour brides, and the amazing Kruger atmosphere. Hello everybody, I'm Karabo, your Northern Bushman. Our energy levels were running low at this point due to the New Year's Eve celebrations. The only thing keeping us from a total shutdown was the excitement of being back in the park. I grew up in a town not far from the Kruger, so day visits were the order of the day during long weekends and holidays in general. I only ever got to sleep in the park in my early adult life due to affordability. I never looked back ever since. Entering via Pafuri was a milestone for us because this was the last remaining gate to take off our list. On this trip, we would sleep one night in Shingwezi and the remaining nights would be in Lower Sabi. Upon arrival in Shingwezi, we took a much needed nap for about three hours. We went out at 1700, meaning we had about an hour and a half to conclude our self-drive. After waking up from our nap, we could have just bride and had dinner, but we wouldn't have seen this young male lion.
This elephant down by the Shinguizi River and the woodland kingfisher calls are a constant reminder of one thing. You are in the best place in the world. We are now about to leave Shinguezi on our way to Lower Sabi. Um, yeah, so how far? Alright, so going, we are from Shinguezi and Lower Sabi. So it's here, 276 kilometers, which should take us about 11 hours or so. 11 hours 2 minutes uh, according to the estimated time i think they use um roughly i think uh 25 k's an hour or less somewhere there um keeping in mind the stoppages we make um at sightings and things like that so yeah so basically it's, it's um, just over 11 hours of driving but it should take us about 12. at least they close at half past yeah. six the gates close at 18 30 so yeah we are we're all good we look we've got all the time in the world uh that's why we're here and um yeah fingers crossed
The North is just different in a way. It has its own special moments. One of those moments was this mother hyena and its cub. The Tropic of Capricorn, a special landmark. We passed by Mopani in search of fresh produce, but the camp was also in short supply just like Shinguedzi, so we moved on, but not before enjoying the stunning views of the Pioneer Dam. We made another stop in Letaba. We hadn't been inside the newly rebuilt park shop. Great job by Sun Parks. It was about time. Yet there were no vegetables for us to purchase. Here's a harsh reminder of the floods in the year 2000. 
I've seen the footage and it wasn't pretty. Waman's lookout pond is always worth the stop. It provides unspoiled views of the Olifants River. We took what the Kruger gave us in terms of sightings. Nothing was taken for granted. We didn't make a stop at the Olifant's Bridge. We had been here a couple of times before. We'll just save this one for another trip. To be honest, we were starving at this point. We only had one thing on our minds when we got to Chokwani, buffalo pies. We arrived in Loasabi earlier than expected, so we checked in and offloaded a few things from the car, then we went straight out. Driving on Kruger roads is similar to rolling a dice. Choosing your route is always a gamble. You have to be at the right place at the right time. It's always about luck, but fortune favors the brave. We hit the jackpot with these lions.
خیلی مدیده آن را پنه برم The lions eventually showed us their bags and it was now time to move on, but what a sighting. In the year of 2020, we had an amazing sighting of a leopard on this tree. It's a pity I was only focusing on photos and not videos back then. Good evening. Uh, the tree that you see uh, about 20 meters in, uh, when we passed here earlier on, um, they told us that there was a leopard with a kill. But when we passed, when we actually got here while going south, we're actually from the south now, we actually did the S130 and S137 where we saw the lions. So it's about quarter past six now. Uh, we're gonna leave here in the next five minutes. We were, uh, we were just chilling and hoping, or rather wishing, that the leopard would come back to its kill and have a late lunch or early dinner, something like that. Yeah, but it doesn't look like the leopard is gonna come anytime soon. It's just so quiet. Uh, and tomorrow, we have, this is we will we'll, we'll definitely start here. Yeah, we're gonna leave camp at about half past five, six o'clock. The first thing we'll do is to come here. So, yeah, uh, to close off the evening, we're just going to go back to camp, drive. We're going to have some picanha. Uh, we're going to have it with salsa and maybe some potatoes from the fire. So, ciao.
Evet. Çok lokal. On day three, we went to Komati Port, so we headed towards Crocodile Bridge because we needed a few items. We needed vegetables in particular due to the shortages at camp. Out of the blue popped out this male lion. I spotted him on my rearview mirror while he was still crossing the road. We did a short drive on the S25. Luck was again on our side. The reward this time was the mighty Burami Pride.
Why leave when the concept of time doesn't exist here except for when adhering to gate times? So we continue to enjoy this sighting. While we were at this sighting, the lion started paying more and more attention to a zebra that was nearby. But in my honest opinion, the zebra was well aware of their presence, probably daring the lions. Catch me if you can.
so lion is green in this cam so i think we saw it uh, somewhere, somewhere just, just before, before the, the turn here yeah just before the s28 uh, yeah, there. there we go So after getting our supplies in Kombati Puerto, we hit the S25 in order to stretch our drive because Crocodile Bridge and Lower Sabi aren't that far apart. We are now on the S26, we wanted to do ponder them, meaning continuing via the S26 or head back to the H422, uh, which would mean that we would have to take the H5, which is on my right. However, it took us about an hour and a half to do just 16 kilometers um, because we took we came here via the S25. So the road conditions aren't so good. Um, the S road conditions are, aren't so good. Um, the road has a lot of ditches, uh, obviously washed away from the rain. Ah, uh, I'm thinking we might as well go back to the H422 and uh, continue to lower Sabi. And yeah, it just shows you uh, just how you you know just how easily one can change their plans while they're driving in the Kruger National Park. 
but so far it's been a good day uh we saw lions uh we went out the park anyway to get supplies and uh, you know we're not so tired we're okay well rested last night so it's just so quiet and it's, it's one of those days where you know you could even open a beer and relax somewhere you know it's it's cloudy it's yes it's humid but it's it's not so hot. Temperatures are about 27. Let me check. 27 degrees. Yeah, Celsius. Oh, I wish I could get you guys a leopard. We haven't seen a leopard ever since we came into the park. But it's not about the big five. Like, uh, you know, so it's, being in this place is enough. So, but I just wish I could get you guys a leopard. I so wish. If not today, then tomorrow at least. Yeah, wish me luck. Cheers. Sometimes elephant roadblocks are convenient. They provide you with the opportunity to take a break from all the driving. At this elephant sighting, we bumped into Tina's Potter, who is one of our YouTube subscribers. I must say, it felt good for him to have recognized us. Shout out to you, Tina's. We eventually saw the leopard that had eluded us thus far. It turns out it was a mating pair all along. We had another good omen at the sighting. We bumped into Neo and Debogo who are subscribers of the channel. Big up to you guys, your support is appreciated. Another shout out to Pindu and D whom we met in January 2023. They also have their YouTube channel called Not Far From Home. We didn't stay long at this leopard sighting because we felt that there was nothing more the sighting could offer us. It wasn't easy to get a proper angle for some good shots. So we decided to drive to Lubza Lubza because we only had an hour before gate closure time. Having left the leopard sighting was a good move after all, because we saw this lioness relocating one of its cubs. We know the lioness had two cubs because there were reports of such in the area.
All right, uh, guys, so now we're waiting and hoping um, for the lioness to come back, maybe with the other cub. Um, we're in between Lubza Lubza and Lower Sabi, more on the Lower Sabi side. So, yeah, we're just going to wait. I think uh, where we are now to camp, Lower Sabi, it should be about five minutes or so. We're the only car here. Uh, other people gave up, but we've got hope. Uh, yeah, we'll, we've got hope. And if we don't see the lioness again tonight or this evening, tomorrow, first thing in the morning, we're going to be here. So if you've been watching this video up to so far, up to this part, stick around, stick around. The lioness eventually returned but without its cub. One can only speculate as to what happened to the other cub. After the lion sighting, we then went to Sunset Dam before some proper sundowners and some dinner.
On day four, we started our day at Tandanyati High as a starter. On this day, we wanted to have some lunch at the Skukuza Golf Club. We had never been there before. It's always nice to do something new. This buffalo sighting was the only significant sighting we saw on our way to the golf club. I then drove at maximum permissible speed because I was now hungry.
This was our first ever sighting of a giant kingfisher. Who would have thought? At the golf club, we were not really sure if we were going to be allowed entry into the premises, especially if we were not going to be playing some golf. But it turns out everyone is welcome, which is good. We always take our time to appreciate the troops as they are grooming each other. And finally, our first lion sighting of the day. That was a relief. We took some time to film the detour that was created as a result of the road being washed away by the previous floods.
the power of nature. It's as if the road was never there. The Yipo population at Mwatimiri appears to be increasing year by year, and that's a good sign. On day 5, we decided to apply a cheat code to the game. The plan was to exit via Crocodile Bridge and re-enter via Malilane Gate. The move wasn't a desperate one. We just wanted to see some rhinos and the decision was unanimous so we had to do it.
To have the odds in our favor, we decided to draw some luck from the Crocodile River as usual. Don't worry, we don't practice any voodoo or any black magic, we're just having some sentimental fun. We were off to a great start just after Malila Negate, but the problem was that this leopard was only visible from one angle, meaning we had to give other cars a chance, so we moved on shortly afterwards. We were pleased with this lioness sighting, but still no rhino in sight, so we continued with our search for a Pondolga Bechan, the rhino. And finally, a rhino sighting, which was the whole point of this drive. This was the big paycheck.
We had our lunch at Afsal picnic spot. Nothing goes to waste. We made some eggs and mushrooms with last night's leftovers. Today's dinner, pork burevors and chicken wings. Uh, because we just ate, it's time for some dessert pedal pops. <laughs> If you have never been to Matekenyan, here's what the drive down looks like. This buffalo sighting essentially meant that we had completed the big five before reaching Skukuza. A bonus was this leopard on a tree but it was too far away, so we didn't stay around for long. On this day, it was all about taking it easy. 
We wanted to chill somewhere and have some lunch, so we went to the Kruger station for some pizza. After lunch, we made our way to transport them because we didn't want to go back to camp too early. We were blessed with this special sighting of a duck chanting goshawk. This was a first for us. There wasn't much to see at Transport Dam, just a couple of hippos, so we headed back to camp. Just after passing Kutlu, we saw the three lionesses that we had seen the other day.
Sunset Dam is always a must, just a few minutes before heading back to camp. We went to the poolside for a couple of minutes before starting with dinner preps. We were now heading out of the park. I was a bit hungover, so I only had cheese grillers on my mind. We drove deep into the bush to try our luck with some rhinos. We called and they answered.
This trip felt different. We took our time in everything we did. We truly appreciated the blessing of being able to visit this marvelous place. I'll be doing Loa Sabi again soon. It will probably be a solo trip. Stay safe and take care. Please remember to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Peace be with you.